cool air. It became pretty obvious that it's hard to beat a turbine as a way to get energy out of a, an exhaust jet. It's hard to beat a shaft as a way to transfer energy from one part of the engine to an airplane to another. And a fan is just about the best way to provide thrust. And so that was the system that I uh, decided that we ought to be pursuing, developing further. We have the fan in front, which provides about half the lift. And uh, we need something in the back to balance it. So we have a uh, nozzle that rotates uh, like an air conditioning duct in, uh, you get out of a hardware store to vector the thrust down. And then we have two small jets which come off of the cruise engine fan out to the wings to provide roll control. I call it a two plus two configuration. We have two main lift jets, the uh, lift fan and the cruise engine, and then two side jets for roll control. We get about 20,000 pounds of thrust out of the fan, 20,000 out of the rear post, and then about 2,000 out of each of the uh, roll control jets. We had looked at existing engines back in 1987 when the original studies were done, and there just wasn't enough energy available to make this kind of uh, concept work. But uh, the very high energies available in a uh, F-119 engine enabled us to extract additional energy from the exhaust flow and use it to power the lift fan. Without that technology advance, um, this would have been a neat idea, but not technically feasible yet. It occurred to me that if we took the lift fan out of this airplane, it would be a pretty good replacement for the F-16. It would have more range and be a lot more stealthy and be affordable. So uh, the Air Force and the uh, Marines signed an agreement to jointly develop a common affordable fighter. So we looked at adding the Navy to the program and uh, eventually developed it into the Joint Strike Fighter program. Just to replace the airplanes that the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps operate, um, plus the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy is about 3,000 airplanes that we think is sort of our baseline. But if we look at all the F-18s, Harriers, and F-16s that are operated by various countries around the world, there could be as many as 6,000 of them. So the potential is enormous. It could be the last big airplane program, manned airplane program, that we're going to see. The overall design excellence of the Joint Strike Fighter, and in particular, its shaft-driven lift fan, earned the Skunk Works an unprecedented fifth Collier Award. Established in 1911 by publisher Robert J. Collier, this is the most prestigious and coveted award for design excellence in the aerospace industry. I'm an aerodynamicist, and uh, maybe that's why I had the idea for a different kind of propulsion system, but to make it work required a team of Pratt & Whitney and Rolls-Royce and Allison, and so it uh, was a team award. All of us uh, you know, had to work together to make it uh, happen. Um, but it was an incredible feeling to, to see something real that had started out as just a, a briefing chart and an idea. It's uh, what every engineer hopes for. And to say that there's a propulsion system that uh, is now going to go into production, that was a whole new idea. It's an incredible feeling. It's what you work for all your life. After nearly six decades of wizardry, what does the future hold for the Skunk Works? In the early days, a Skunk Works project typically went from concept to production in less than a year. However, the extremely high costs associated with present-day projects have necessitated development periods that frequently span decades. Given that Skunk Works aircraft are known for their long operating lives, this lengthy process presents a whole new set of challenges. The time it takes to develop even a component subsystem or technology in applying a weapon system is running about 10 years. So we need to identify those technologies 10 years prior to their actual use, have a crystal ball that gives us some understanding of what that use might be, and then go ahead and develop those technologies uh, in close partnership with our customers. One of the most exciting and challenging projects on Skunk Works drawing boards is the QSP, or Quiet Supersonic Platform, an aircraft that does away with the troublesome sonic boom that currently limits all supersonic flights over land. And we believe that will open up supersonic flight across the United States, which has uh, tremendous benefits from a commercial perspective. Uh, but this vehicle also has tremendous uh, application in the military sense in that it has sustained supersonic uh, capability above Mach 2. It has 
probably its most important new characteristic is up to a seven times improvement in the uh, payload range combination in terms of its being able to uh, deliver significant payload uh, over five, 6,000 miles unrefueled uh, obviously uh, allows it to be seriously considered for any future uh, military or Air Force strategic attack uh, kinds of applications. For nearly 60 years, the Skunk Works has produced an amazing series of aircraft that challenge the technologies of their day. While we can't tell you what the future has in store, we can tell you the great planes of tomorrow will come from the Skunk Works.